All right. At this point, we've been in Japan for nearly two weeks, and most of that was in Tokyo. But it was time to start phase two of our trip, which was where we traveled to a few other Japanese cities. So we woke up early one morning, headed to the bus station, and caught a bus for Takayama. This part of Japan is pretty mountainous, so there's a few long tunnels. The lady across from us there got on the bus, pulled the curtains across, and then immediately went to sleep, uh, which kind of sucked because we would occasionally catch glimpses of Mount Fuji out there, but we could never get a really good look at it. Oh well. The bus took enough pee breaks that we never really felt cramped up or uncomfortable. This one had some nice carved benches and inlay. and another hot spring foot bath. But the bus only took us so far, and we had to hoof it the rest of the way. You see, we weren't going straight to Takayama. We had a special stop off along the way. Huh? Ah, might be. Yeah, right? What we just trudged through was Fukuji Onsen in the Okuhira region, uh, another little hot spring town. And this was our Ryokan, traditional Japanese inn, for the night. All right, reminder, Ryokan, so this is like the place that we were back in Hakone, except this place was actually good. This is what the lobby looks like when you get in there. Just look at that place. The room is again very traditional. It has the sliding shoji doors uh, and the tatami mat floors and the low tables, um, but it's also still very nice. We have a little side seating area separate from the main seating area. A little bathroom nook. The toilet is in the room on the right there. What's really nice about this place is it has private baths. Let's go check those out. All of the hot springs here you're meant to soak in and not clean in, so they all have this area in front of it where you are meant to kind of shower your body off before you get into the hot spring bath. This particular room has a, a, a wooden tub on the inside. That was made with local cypress. And then they also have an external bath uh, hot spring. This room was lovely. 
This place also had some baths that were outside of the rooms that you had to kind of reserve ahead of time, but they were a little bit more spacious and nice. Uh, we went to one of those, but we obviously couldn't film there. Not that the ones in the rooms weren't nice. There's a tradition of some sort about drinking milk after you get out of a hot spring, so the uh, Ryokan offered a milk uh, <laughs> that you could just pick up from the front desk, and then you could sit in this kind of resting area, public resting area, while you were drinking it. The reason you're getting mostly photos here is because this is kind of a semi-private space, and so we didn't want to be filming other guests in it. Some Ryokans will serve food in your room, but this one had us come to a dining area instead, so we thought that it would be public, uh, but instead they actually had little private dining rooms for each guest. This particular Ryokan only has like six or ten rooms or something like that, and so it wasn't as difficult, I guess. That's why dinner is just a slideshow of photos, because I also didn't want to bring the camera to dinner. Anyway, the food was all really, really good and kind of a magical experience. This is some local river trout sushi. Miso soup, of course. Local wagyu beef and mushrooms. And then this is the lava stone that we cooked them on. A ball of rice flour, a sweet glaze, roast in front of a fire. This is the pot of miso soup that we got our soup out of. There was honestly more than we could eat. And because the whole thing is such a personalized experience, by the time we got back from dinner, the table had been removed and our beds had been set out for us back in our room. So we took another hot bath and then went to bed. The next morning we had a breakfast that was presented in very much the same style as dinner, but obviously the food was different. Everything tasted amazing, of course. We were only here for one night, but it wasn't raining this morning, so we wanted to explore the town a little bit uh, before we had to leave. Town's not even really the right word, but the area that they're in is simply beautiful. We found a weird little knick-knack market that we looked through for a little bit. And pretty near to where we were staying, there was a trailhead for a trail that went up the mountain near here. Uh, we didn't have a lot of time to hike it, but we wanted to hike just a little. So we uh, made our way up the very steep walkway, uh, just, just, just enough to have said that we've done it, we basically. This rock was a good rock. It's a good rock. Probably shouldn't. The water here just kind of pours down the mountain and then heads out into a little channels that they've constructed. But uh, anyway, we headed home and set off for Takayama. Actual Takayama this time. This trip was much shorter. After we dropped our bags off at the hotel, we went out to walk around and explore the town. We came to Takayama because they had a spring festival that we wanted to see, and it's up in the mountains. And so in our imaginations when we were planning it, we kind of expected this to be a quaint mountain town. But actually, it turns out like 90,000 people live here, and it's actually a pretty mid-sized city. Despite that, we showed up about a day before the festival so that we could walk through the town and see it as it is when it's not in festival mode. Uh, and everything seemed pretty relaxed. It actually seemed like a really nice city. We visited this outdoor store and we asked her if there was any place around here to walk and she said, well, there's this big walking trail just over there that goes up to like the ruins of an old castle on the hill. And we were like, yeah, that'll do. As we were coming up the hill here, we saw some animal uh, that was just walking casually behind this group, and the, cam the camera doesn't really pick it up very well, but we didn't really know what it was. It didn't really have the, the shape of a 
deer. We thought maybe it was like a tall dog-like creature or like, you know, a really thin boar or even like a tiny bear. We weren't really sure what the heck it was. But because we weren't sure what it was, we weren't sure if it was dangerous or not. So we talked about it a lot throughout the hike. Yep. <laughs> it's fine. I understand. It was a very pretty walk with a lot of nice views over the city, uh, and the castle was so ruined so as to be almost unrecognizable as a castle. It was just some stone walls. So I guess when this was a castle, this was part of its wall, I'm gonna guess. Yeah, I would say honestly, it looked more like a deer than a boar, given my assumptions about what deers and boars look like. It was around this time that we looked up what animals are in this area that look kind of like deers and found out that this was a Japanese soro, which uh, were quite rare at a time. Uh, they were hunted almost to extinction, but they have been kind of building back up over time. Ooh. Mountains. We walked back down the other side of the mountain and uh, back into town. We ran into this really pretty shrine here on the way back to our hotel. Takayama is a modern city, but it has an old-timey tourist district. I noticed all throughout Japan, rather than having any sort of storm sewer system, they just had these little gutters at the sides of the road um, that the water would just be allowed to collect in. And sometimes they were capped over, and sometimes they were just left open like this. So then this clever thing uses a little water wheel in there to drive this automata uh, and it was opening and closing and revealing the food and then it would be like different food when it pulled open again the next time. Super cool. Anyway, given that we had just had that amazing Japanese meal the night before, uh, we decided today that we felt like something a little more like pizza. And it was great. And then back to the hotel before the festival tomorrow. It wasn't too difficult to find the festival, just follow the noises in the distance. We also found a few of these empty stables scattered throughout town. <laughs> and before too long, we found the floats that Takayama's festival is famous for. Mm -hmm. So we're walking through the crowd, we're looking at this uh, pretty cool float, and then all of a sudden it starts to move and now we're in the parade. I think you get the gist of what it sounded like, but you'll be happy to know that didn't stop for a while. So we marched along with this float for a while to see where it was going. And then at some point we came upon another one. We decided to let ours go and see what these new ones were up to. See, they had a bit of a problem. They were going this way and they wanted to be going that way. Hmm. 
So they pulled it straight into the intersection here. And then we waited a little bit while this guy got to work. And then, blah, they just push it around the corner. Might as well mention here how intricate and artistic these uh, floats all were. Anyway, they got to walking again, and we decided to wait and see what the next one was going to be like. And then that one had to wind up the wheel and make the same turn. This festival's been going on in some form or another since the 1600s. That alone is pretty impressive by my standards. Anyway, this probably is, again, more interesting to be in than to watch, so I might skip ahead a little bit. Uh, we were here for quite a while. When we actually followed the floats, where they were going was a street where they were all going to be lined up and so that people could inspect them. These dudes are basically parallel park in this thing. And then they built a little fence around it. There was a little TV crew here covering it. I don't know if this dude is famous or local. I don't know. These things are some assembly required. Anyway, we went on a walk to explore all the other floats down this uh, street here. This isn't just any street. I'm pretty sure they're lined up in front of the temple, actually. I had, I think, the obvious thought one has when looking at things like this, which is, oh man, why doesn't Canada have giant floats in a parade? And I realized, like, of course we have giant floats in a parade, but they don't feel the same. They don't feel as big. They don't feel as interesting. Is it just because these are you know, intricately carved with good craftsmanship? Is it because uh, they are old? Is it because they're foreign? To me, at least. I don't know, it just doesn't feel the same. All right, there's something else the Takayama Spring Festival is known for, which is a puppet show. So we're gonna go check that out. Oh. I was like, it's weird that there's not much more of a line. It's because the marionettes are on that side. <laughs> How do you feel? We decided to try checking it out from the back. There was a lot more room on our side, but like for good reason. Here's what we got from the first of three puppets. Could try zooming in a bit maybe. So that's the puppet out front with the hat waving and then the human instrumentalists in the back. And remember, this is zoomed in. We didn't get much out of this one. Maybe the second one will be better though. This one is a lady puppet dancing. We read about on the internet later. She's on the other side of there somewhere. So we moved back a bit before the third one started. This was our view of the third one. Obviously, it's not great, but we can kind of see something. So using the power of zoom, we'll see if we can make it any better. So this puppet uh, very slowly walked out to the end of the um, walkway there, holding a basket. Very slowly. Then he put the basket down and hung out very carefully. And then once it was safe, he absolutely lost it and booked it out of there. And then 
we waited. Those tappy little feet. Well, that was fun. Anyway, uh, after that, we walked around this little market here and then ate an apple. Good stuff. There was a parade parade at night, but this was still midday, so uh, we had to find something else to do with the rest of our day. Never did figure out what that gold building was. Seemed kind of neat, though. After a surprisingly poo walk next to the road, uh, we arrived here at the Hida Folk Village. I'm going to spend very little time talking about this, because some people don't like heritage villages at home. But it was kind of interesting seeing what, you know, life was like on the frontier of Japan. Uh, you know, what their history was like pre-industrial era. And just like heritage villages at home, these weren't all in one place where it was preserved as a village. They were found from all over and kind of constructed into a village uh, by bringing the things here, which was neat. So just a few highlights and then we can move on. First one, uh, Froggy. He's a sweetie. Look at how thatched this roof is. These are the ends of the, the straw. This thing which apparently was used to automatically keep boars and birds out of fields by, like, scaring them. This is clearly an old bell. And you make a wish during the ringing. This is inside one of those huge thatched roofs. They have these absolutely massive beams and then the thatch is all tied to the outside. They've also got this joinery that's all laps and mortise and tenons and wedges. Good stuff, good stuff. The teensy little fish farm. And some ducks. And some toys to screw around with. These were hard as F. Anyway, this place was neat, for me at least. But then again, I like old stuff, so... We wanted to eat something before the parade, so naturally we got enchiladas, which are very similar to the enchiladas at home, except they use sushi rice, which was actually kind of funny. <laughs> and then it was out onto the street to find our spot to stand and wait for things. These people were down on the edge of the river looking up at the bridge where the parade would be. Lots of people already got here. But we eventually found our spot. And then we waited for the parade to reach us. I'm gonna cut through the parade pretty heavily because it was pretty long and slow. But it started out with these fellas, and uh, honestly, Steph's camera handles low light better than mine, so we're gonna switch to her footage in just a sec, just so you can uh, see closer to what it actually looked like. We really like these clacky boys. A little bit later, the first of the floats started to arrive, this time adorned with lanterns. There's something cool about looking over and just having something big and glowing coming towards you. Thank you. 
Mmm, you're right. Guess you're getting a gist, uh, so I might actually cut some of these out. Let me be clear, I liked watching all of them. I had a really good time with this parade, but, you know, atmosphere. So now that's the back of the last one and we're all good to go. Let's uh, skedaddle. Would have been nice if this came through on the camera. So this was uh, the old timey street from before, but with all these paper lanterns lit up, it looked really beautiful. Along the way back, we found a place where all the food had been set up, like, you know, the stuff that you'd eat at a festival. What I really like about this part was that like, like, so the parade was very pretty, the floats were very pretty, the, you know, it was all a very cool experience, but here was just Japanese people just eating food, they were laughing, they were all talking excitedly. You'd have like a group of school kids who would go by and then they'd see another group of school kids they know and they'd all like talk to each other and be like, oh hey, what's up or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. Um, this just felt like a place where people lived and were excited to have a good time. This is where the Japanese people came to celebrate the festival, not the parade. I mean, they were at the parade, but, but this was the fun part. So that was just one side. I'm not going to take you down the other. We did go down it though. Anyways, back to the hotel. I'm just going to briefly go over the hotel room. Uh, this is the hotel lobby, by the way. But basically, I'm just going to put it in here so that when we're watching this video ourselves back later, we'll be like, oh yeah, that room. I filmed this the next morning, by the way. We didn't have daylight coming in in the middle of the night. We spent a few nights in this room, and actually we really liked it. It was very comfortable and, you know, nice. That's where I worked on these videos. That's the Takayama train station. There's that goddamn golden building again. Also, we couldn't film in the onsen because everyone's nudie, but as you can see from this uh, bit from the TV screen that I pulled out, this is kind of what it looked like. Obviously punched up a little, but pretty nice. All right, let's wrap this up. They actually do this same festival thing on two different days, so long as it isn't raining. But the second day was raining, so it's a good thing we already saw it. Here are our clappy boys from the night before. We're making house calls. And here's the float hiding from the rain, uh, but people can still come see it. Sashiko Sewing Store. Mm hmm. Other sewing store, good soundtrack. Walk along a pretty river. Get some more hand pressed onigiri. That's the rice balls with stuff in. They were sold out of like half the flavors, but these ones were good. And then we went back to the festival street to get some more takoyaki, that's the octopus balls. Rounded out with some more matcha ice cream and you got a nice relaxing day. Oh yeah, there was also these guys. I don't really know what their deal was, but I imagine it was very important to the festival. Oh, more, more, more. some of this. They did a lot of this. They did a few of these.
couple of these too. And then sometimes they just changed places entirely. Hope it doesn't sound like I'm being sarcastic. I actually loved this thing. Even though I don't know what they're doing, I'm glad that they're out there doing something. It's neat that when there's cultural traditions that, you know, go back a ways, whatever it is that they're for. I think I just like it when people do stuff. Right, so that was our little trip to Takayama uh, to see the festival. Uh, and also in there we went to that Ryokan. It was a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, this video took a long time, uh, partly because of how much we liked it there. Uh, we just really liked the feeling of Takayama. As of right now, I'm back in Canada already and have been for about a week and a half. But I've still got four folders worth of things that I'd like to make videos about. So next up is Hiroshima.